Hi, I'm Brad Townsley. I'm a scientist in R&D at Active Motif, and today I'm going to talk about the cut and run assay. So what we're going to talk about in this webinar is we'll review what cut and run is. It stands for cleavage under targeted targets uh, released using nuclease. Uh, we'll talk about the key aspects of cut and run um, and the development of cut and run uh, in the Hennikoff lab. We'll go over a protocol overview and we'll compare histone marks using chip seat cut and tag and cut and run to get an idea of how these assays compare with each other. And we'll look at how they capture peaks uh, similarly or differently between those assays as well. We'll also be able to see uh, metagene comparisons so that we can uh, see exactly how these things are, are picking up uh, regions of the genome uh, differently. Or similarly, and um, we'll be comparing uh, different targets uh, using uh, cut and run and chip seek. We'll also go over how many cells are needed for the cut and run assay and how you might determine which uh, assay is best for your particular needs, uh, whether it's cut and tag, cut and run, or chip seek, and the advantages and considerations of each of those. What is cleavage under targets and release using nuclease? Cut and run is an NGS assay, which allows you to sequence DNA, which is proximal to proteins of interest in the chromatin. It uses a microcockle nuclease, which is a fusion protein with protein A and protein G, which allows it to associate to an antibody, which is specifically targeted to your protein of interest. Key aspects of cut and run are lower input requirements than ChIP-seq, in addition to lower sequencing requirements than ChIP-seq. And critically, it works with transcription factors, whereas cut and tag is traditionally used for histone marks. Additionally, cut and run is also able to go down to as few as 5,000 cells for certain marks. The cut and run assay was developed by the Hennikoff lab. Uh, and as you can see on the top is a diagram of a fusion protein. Uh, protein A and protein G are fused to the micrococcal nuclease, and this allows for a binding of a wide range of antibodies. Um, and you can see uh, from data from uh, the Mears et al. paper that uh, you get robust data from either rabbit or mouse uh, antibodies, um, and it is uh, highly reproducible uh, and not dependent on the uh, particular origin of the antibody of use. Let's go over how cut and run works. So you start with cells or isolated nuclei uh, from as few as 5,000 up to 500,000. And the cells or nuclei are bound to con A beads. The samples are permeabilized with digitonin and antibodies to your target of interest are introduced. The antibodies cross the permeabilized membranes and make their way into the nucleus where they associate with your target of interest. The PAG MNAs is added and the AG fusion protein binds to the antibodies which are bound to the target in the chromatin. At this point, the uh, nuclease is inactive. The nuclease activity is activated by the addition of calcium ions. The nuclease cuts the DNA proximal to the location in the chromatin and frees those regions from the, the genome at large. The reaction is stopped by chelating the calcium and the samples are warmed to 37 degrees so that the small fragments can uh, permeabilize, uh, can uh, diffuse back out into the cell solution. So the DNA from the salt, uh, supernatant is uh, purified and a library prep is done. and uh, proceeds on to uh, sequencing and genomic analysis. How does cut and run compare with ChIP-seq? Well, here we can look at tracks from uh, the three different uh, assays, uh, ChIP-seq, cut and run, and cut and tag. Uh, here we're looking at H3K4 trimethyl, which is associated with regions of open chromatin. And on the bottom track, we can have, uh, we can look at the attack seek data just uh, as a reference. So we can see that uh, each of the three assays, chip seek, cut and run, and cut and tag, are all showing uh, strong peaks in the same regions. So we have a high concordance between each of these assays. Cut and run captures most chip seek and uh, cut and tag peaks. 
So between the three assays, uh, the majority of the peaks are captured by all three assays. And uh, cut and run captures a significant fraction of uh, peaks that are uh, uh, captured by ChIP-seq, uh, with uh, some uh, peaks being uh, unique to each assay um, and dependent on the particularities of, of each assay. There's a high correlation between uh, cut and tag, cut and run, and chip seek. Um, each, each of these have a, a very strong correlation uh, when looking at the same marks uh, between each of the assays, um, much higher than uh, when comparing to attack seek, which uh, is a measure of uh, regions of open chromatin as opposed to a, a specific histone mark. Metagene traces for each of these are also uh, very similar between the three assays. Uh, Chip seek, cut and tag, and cut and run show uh, very similar patterns um, to one another. Cut and run compares well with uh, chip seek for um, non histone marks as well. So here we're looking at uh, the uh, histone methyltransferase EZH2 and uh, SUS12. And you can see uh, for EZH2 and for SUS12, uh, both cut and run and chip show. Uh, very similar uh, patterns of distribution in the genome. How many cells do you need for cut and run? Well, it depends on how abundant your mark is. So 5,000 cells is appropriate for very abundant marks like H3K4 uh, trimethyl uh, for transcription factors. Um, for YY1, uh, as few as 25,000 uh, cells are necessary. Um, more is not going to damage the assay. So uh, you can use up to 500,000 cells uh, per sample. Um, and uh, depending on the mark, you can go lower than that, but you won't harm your results by uh, going higher in, in cell number. So technique selection. So why uh, would you use uh, cut and run over chip seek or cut and tag? Um, well, uh, ChIP-seq requires uh, higher sequencing depth and um, much more cells than uh, cut and run. Uh, cut and run is also a simpler benchtop protocol than ChIP-seq and uh, can be completed in uh, as little as two days. Uh, the second day is not particularly taxing. Uh, you can have your libraries ready by the end of the second day. Day one is uh, pretty easy, about an hour and a half of setup and then an overnight incubation. So cut and run is really a pretty simple, straightforward protocol. So advantages and considerations to uh, using cut and run. So advantages over essays, uh, other essays. Cells remain in their native state compared with ChIP-seq. So um, the cells are bound to the con A beads and you're using uh, the, the cells uh, without necessarily having to do any kind of um, destructive preparation on them. It requires only a primary antibody uh, compared with cut and tag. So this cuts down the number of handling steps and it has a simplified workflow, which reduces the, the hands-on time. There's a very large number of uh, targets that can be uh, used with the cut and run assay uh, because uh, it is compatible with transcription factors, whereas cut and tag is more appropriate for uh, histone marks and, and some more abundant uh, uh, proteins in the chromatin. It requires uh, less sequencing depth than ChIP-seq and much lower cell requirements. So some things to consider, uh, it has a separate library prep when compared with cut and tag. Uh, the tagmentation-based assays do not require uh, an additional library prep. Um, and uh, another consideration is cell number. So uh, you can use as many as 5, uh, 500,000 cells or as few as 5,000, depending on the, the target you're uh, investigating. In conclusion, uh, cut and run is a novel and useful technique. The results are comparable with ChIP-seq at lower input requirement, and it is a faster and easier protocol than ChIP-seq. And critically, there's no sonication step, uh, so it doesn't require any dedicated hardware. To learn more about Cut and Run and our related products and services, 
visit us at activemotif.com slash cut dash run.